The Shaquem Griffin story is one of my favorites. If you somehow missed it, he's a linebacker from Central Florida who only has one hand. There's a lot of debate if that could affect him in the NFL. To make things more interesting, he dominated the combine and put up 20 reps on his bench press while also running a blazing 4.38 40-yard dash. Based on his size and speed, Griffin made some pretty awesome plays in college. In the American Athletic Conference Championship, he burst off the line of scrimmage, flew in the backfield, and stripped the quarterback. This was all done in three seconds. In the NFL, I think his skill set translates to a number of defenses. He would do really well with a team like the Redskins to learn the position while also playing special teams. Seattle is another place where I think he'd be a good fit. He could be their third linebacker and learn behind KJ Wright and Bobby Wagner. As a prospect, Griffin has the speed to be a sideline to sideline defender. He plays with a high level motor and does a great job of pursuing the plays across the field. He's really good at knifing through defenses and creating plays in the backfield. Where he tends to struggle is that his awareness is very hit or miss. He's not a good zone defender, and his strength at the point of attack isn't the best. In my opinion, he should start his career as a backup while providing value on special teams. Based on all this, the earliest I'd feel comfortable taking him is in the fourth or fifth round of this draft. In college, Griffin mainly lined up as an edge defender. He rushed the passer while also dropping into zones. In this scheme, he collected seven sacks and 51 total pressures. However, I don't think he has the size and physical makeup to be a pure edge rusher in the pros. Typical 34 outside linebackers are 3 inches taller, have 2 inch longer arms, and weigh about 20 pounds more. This size difference definitely shows up on tape, especially when he defends a run. Against zone blocking teams, he consistently gets washed down the line and will never be able to fully anchor against tackles. He does maintain his edge duties and really loses contain, but he's simply not physical enough to seal the edge from the outside. One thing I noticed when charting his plays is that he sometimes has a hard time following the handoff. This in any position will be an issue. Multiple times this season, the offense specifically attacked him on zone read option plays. He would penetrate and attack the running back, but he would completely miss the quarterback. Memphis, for example, did this a bunch of times during their two meetings and he fell for them way too many times. As a pure pass rusher, he was pro football focus's second rated defender. He relentlessly used his motor and flashed a pretty good spin move. Against Memphis, he attacked the left tackle using his burst to get up the field. This caused the blocker to flip his hips towards the sideline, which opened the window for him to spin pass and sack the quarterback. Where Griffin tends to fail as a pass rusher is he's not strong enough to convert speed to power, and he has a very hard time disengaging. Also, once his initial move fails, he hasn't perfected any counter moves to help him get free. Like any prospect at the college level, there were certain plays where his motor or simply the blocking scheme broke down. When this happened, Griffin definitely took advantage and wreaked havoc in the backfield. In overtime versus Memphis, Griffin was left unblocked and he leveled the quarterback to the ground. This pressure forced the quarterback to fling the ball in the air and it was intercepted for the game stealing play. As I mentioned earlier, I don't think he'll make a good edge defender in the pros. He would have no value on early downs and would only be useful as a situational pass rusher. Based on his other strengths though, I feel like his natural position to get him on the field is either as a 43 outside linebacker or shifting inside and becoming a 34 inside linebacker instead. Both of these spots would allow him to use his speed and pursuit while being able to flow to the play. He's much more natural in space and has the vision to knife through a defense and chase a play sideline to sideline. Beyond playing linebacker, some in the media have suggested he should switch to safety. I strongly disagree though. His pursuit angles head on or going north to south are simply not good enough. Versus SMU, he completely missed the quarterback. UCF dropped his man coverage and after he realized the QB had escaped, he was in position to make a play. Instead, he takes a bad angle and allows him to gain an additional 15 yards down the field. I would much rather keep him in the front seven as a linebacker to better use his strengths. Now, up to this point in the video, I've only briefly talked about his hand. If you're going to analyze him objectively as a player, there are two things you have to be worried about. The first is tackling. Griffin has a nasty habit of tackling too high. His reaction and change of direction from zone to sprint was very good, but his aiming point was the issue. During this season, he missed six tackles, which was way too many. Outside of tackling, the main thing you have to be worried about is how he disengages from blocks. There are times where he tends to avoid contact and try to slip by as opposed to directly facing a blocker. But when he has to use his hands to separate, he'll sometimes get knocked to the ground. This happened especially on cut blocks. In this play, he misses downward punch and wasn't able to keep his feet clean. In my opinion, if he wants to become a starter, he needs to get better at zone coverage as well. He sometimes doesn't show the awareness to pick up receivers and he allow them to get open. In this play against South Florida, Griffin is the only linebacker in the area, yet he completely ignores the receiver. 
I love the aggression at the end of the play, but these yards are 100% his fault. Here's another play versus Memphis. Anthony Miller runs into the space between Griffin and the sideline and literally jumps around waving for the ball. Meanwhile, Griffin doesn't see him and allows him to gain an easy six yards on the first down. In general, I feel like he's better at sensing receivers behind him than directly reacting to the play in front of him. He usually does a good job dropping to the proper depth, but until he improves in his awareness, I won't fully be able to trust him in zone. Additionally, when you watch him backpedal, he looks a bit awkward in space. He has too much weight on his toes, and he needs to do a better job of dropping his hips in order to turn more quickly in space. The last thing I want to talk about is that Griffin will be very valuable in obvious pass rushing downs. He can blitz from a two-point stance and can run a tackle and stunt perfectly. He uses his speed and motor to penetrate, and I feel like teams will love using him in this role until he gets better in coverage. For his pro comparison, Griffin obviously reminds me of his brother. Get it? Because they're twins? Sorry I had to. But in all seriousness, I see a lot of Deion Jones from Atlanta. They were both roughly the same size, and they were both high effort, team first type of prospects. I'm not saying Griffin is going to be as good as Jones, but that's definitely the type of football ability and role I would try to have him imitate. Overall, Griffin is a very raw prospect. There's no denying that he has the burst and speed to make an impact. However, based on his current abilities, he still has a lot of work to do before he becomes a starter. Well, that's all I have for this one. My Buggy has generously agreed to sponsor this week's videos. They want to offer every view of this channel a 50% sign-up bonus. Go ahead and use promotion code SAMUEL when you sign up. Now, I know you primarily think I'm a football guy, but with March Madness here, I'll be releasing my bracket later this week. If you want to test your luck and possibly earn some extra cash, you can do that using this code. Thank you so much for watching, and if you want to support this channel directly, go ahead and click the link to my Patreon account. You can also follow me on Twitter at Samuel Gold as well.